Member Peck. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, as we've all heard and read in the paper that uh, RTD has been in the news about lost revenues and possible furloughs of employees. Um, so one of the places that they want to take revenue from is from our Fast Tracks Internal Savings Account, or FISA. Um, I believe that that FISA account needs to remain intact. Um, so with that, I move to direct staff to send a letter from council in favor of keeping the FISA funds whole. Second. Second. Thank you. All right. All, right. Um, uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. I know the MCC has already written a letter, um, but can't hurt. All right. Thanks. Anything else? All right. Uh, moving on, public invite to be heard. Um, I'd like to reiterate there are alternatives to having unsafe microwave emitting devices i.e. smart meters or AMI installed on every person's home and business in the city of Longmont. And again, I urge you to host a study session on this matter. Good evening, Mayor Bagley, council members. I am here once again to express my concern over the traffic signal that is placed at the intersection of Pike Road and South Kaufman Street. The reason I'm contacting you is I wrote a letter to city commissioners and I was asking how I can get involved with this RV ordinance because I feel I, as a long-term resident, that people of my background are being excluded from the process. Let's move on to special reports. Uh, we have the first one by the Longmont Housing Authority. Is Cameron Grant here? There he is. I wanted to do a bit of a follow-up to some of the discussion that we had uh, two weeks ago at the last study session. Uh, and we, so we started those discussions in February and then the perfect storm hit. Uh, we had a COVID-19 stay-at-home order in March. We had a, a, a notice from our executive director that she would be resigning. Uh, we had several other key staff people resign and in the midst of that, we lost an investor uh, in uh, a $5 million rehabilitation project at one of our properties. Uh, rather than uh, lean away from us, the city staff leaned into those problems right alongside the LHA board and its staff. Uh, because of that, we were able to continue to maintain and provide supportive housing for uh, about 1,380 Longmont residents. Um, and that mission is to provide housing and related services to the low and moderate income families in Longmont, which include elderly residents, disabled households, uh, with a general goal to relieve the community of substandard housing. So where are we going in the future? Uh, we're, we're hoping to continue this collaboration with the city. We're, we've got about you know 12 to 18 months of time I think we're going to need as we evaluate operations and, and come up with the ideal structure. All right, great. Um, do we have any questions from Cameron or for Cameron? All right, Dr. Waters? Yeah, I think I was, that's where I was going. Just, I think, I think it's important for both the, the Times Call and the Long, Longmont Leader to have copies of, of Cameron's letter. We will reconvene another executive session. If we could put that on the schedule at some point. Uh, Eugene, Harold, and we'll pick up where we left off last time. Thank you. All right, let's move on to the uh, update on COVID. Harold? So if you look at the numbers recently, obviously the uh, y-axis has changed um, significantly in terms of the number of cases that, that were that we've seen within Boulder County, uh, and I'm going to talk about that as we're moving through. Um, you heard me the other day talk about the number when we were about 60. Um, you can obviously see that it went in excess of 90, and that, again, is really uh, based on, on what uh, a number of staff who are in conversations with the county. Um, you know, approximately 70% of those cases are related to the university, um, and there's some information that went out this afternoon. 
um, that I will go over um, in a little bit. So um, overall, we're still below 4%. This kind of shows you what's happening um, to the five-day average of um, positive, the percent positive. 10 to 19 is approaching 200. Um, based on what the governor said today, um, I think what we're seeing in, in Boulder County is really the same thing that they're seeing statewide. Um, um, I know many of you are probably, you asked the question last week, well, what does this mean for protect our neighbors with the increased cases? And, and talking with um, the administrator group, it does mean that we essentially have to start back from the new peak. Remember at the beginning of of the COVID-19 situation, we talked about CDBG CV, I'll call it CV from now on. And then we also restructured some of our money in our um, existing CDBG accounts to utilize, uh, um, to put into what we were doing. Okay, All right, so you'll, you. get a, you'll get a detailed list next week with these categories that I've mentioned in the dollars, and then also see what the, the CV dollars are gonna look like. Um, and, and we're going to try to get that out. It may be an addendum that we send out Friday or Monday, but we're still trying to, to look at all of these nuances. All right, great. Um, let's move on to a request for approval of Longmont City Council to negotiate with Boulder County on the acquisition and management of the McLaughlin property. Good evening, Mayor um, and Council Members. David Bell, um, Director of Parks and Natural Resources for Save Longmont. Um, I am here to talk to you about the McLaughlin property and staff's um, request to move forward with negotiating for the acquisition of this property for, for open space. So as you pull into the the Clover Basin, you can look at the property that the county has negotiated with um, to purchase the McLaughlin property. There are areas where people can disperse from and go out and engage in passive recreation. If it's hiking, bird watching, picnicking, whatever that may be, this would be another great area that we can maybe take some of the pressure off of some of those other areas in the city. Good evening, Mayor. Teresa Malloy, Budget Manager. I'm going to start it off for us this evening. So this evening, uh, the topics that we're going to cover for you are a budget tutorial, our total budget summary by fund, some revenue projections, general fund budget summary, public safety fund budget summary, our 2020 budget projections, early childhood education, Human Service Agency funding, Affordable Housing Fund, uh, the Library Feasibility Study, and then finally, Equity in the 2021 Budget and Beyond. Um, so we wanted to start out uh, just basically giving you an overview of the city's financial structure to kind of set the stage for um, the, the um, current budget, our 2020 budget, as well as our 2021 budget. Just an overview uh, of our high level overview of our budget process. We start our process with um, staff creating and updating their, cap their capital improvement um, projects. Uh, this is just a list of all of the funds that are in our proposed budget. Um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time walking you through our 2019 budget process throughout September and October, um, like we will be doing uh, this year. We had uh, discussions with council and that budget uh, was revised. Um, and then uh, throughout uh, 2019, there were eight additional appropriations, um, including the carryover, which was completed in August. And that $185.9 million was made up of 130.8 um, of carryover and 55.1 of new appropriations. So this is a, a history of um, carryover versus new appropriations. Um, so I wanted to take three different funds for you and kind of walk you through um, what, what the original budget looked like, 
what um, the final budget looked like, and then um, fund by fund, how much of that was carryover and new appropriation. And then on the right is uh, the detail um, of these funds. And so, um, and so this is just a snapshot of the different um, categories in our budget. Um, so this is our total budget and uh, roughly one third, one third, one third. So one third of it is, is personal services, one third is operating, and then one third is, is uh, the non-operating and capital together. And this is the general fund. Um, so 74% uh, of the general fund is, is personal services. So heavily um, people um, focused. In, um, and so with that, then I'm gonna turn it over to Jim. Uh, so this proposed budget for 21 is $371.78 million. It's 5.05% more than the 2020 budget. It's $17.9 million more than that, that budget, which was $353.91 million last year. So the major uh, decreases in the individual funds uh, included um, 960 and this is in the CIP, $960,000 in the airport fund, decrease of 2.4 million in the public improvement fund, 2.3 million in the park improvement fund. So the biggest fu funding sources in our, our budget, the ones that we're most reliant on, I guess, as far as them uh, uh, and whether they go up and down are uh, the sales and use tax, the property tax and our building permits. So bringing you some of our, our detail on the revenue projections on each of those. Uh, property tax revenue estimates. Uh, property tax revenue growth in 2020 was over $2.4 million. Uh, so the, the county assessor uh, provides the preliminary information to us each year uh, for the uh, uh, assessed valuations for our budget process. If we do get any new uh, revenue from property tax valuation that we would receive uh, as of October 13th. We will bring that back to you once we're aware of it. Uh, the ordinance for uh, the budget would be proposed on October 27th. So we will have time to be able to include any uh, new valuation within the budget process. Basically, these are the building permit projections that are built into this 2021 budget. See here that the 2020 uh, adopted general fund budget, ongoing revenues and expenses were $86,791,080. Well, so our ongoing revenues, um, although they only went up by $7,670 net, uh, we did have a, an increase of over $2 million in some areas, as well as a decrease of over $2 million. I mentioned the recreation expenses going down. Uh, we also have a decrease in $10,000 towards video services and public access. Level one expenses are expenses that we are facing that we have no choice but to fund them because there are things like contract increases, uh, overtime uh, levels of overtime that we're already uh, paying at from one year to the next and we're trying to cover uh, a level of service that's already being expended. So uh, the general fund has a uh, or the city has a financial policy that the general fund is going to maintain a reserve and it's a reserve that has uh, three different uh, reserve type of targets. Uh, you, you see here that uh, our our reserve targets are very close to what I was just talking about. And so what we are uh, able to do with this budget is increase the amount of dollars going towards our stabilization reserve of 2019 operations. What we bring into this budget process that we have available for uh, one-time uses is uh, uh, about a little less than $2.5 million here. So the Public safety budget, the 2021 revenues include 12.9 million of sales and use tax, $842,000 of grants and other intergovernmental revenues, and then a projected $40,000 from firing range operations. 
So the proposed expenditures of 14 and a half million include uh, just uh, below 100 FTE being funded through the public safety fund. Uh, so the budget for 21 is, is recommending that uh, $715,000 in change for one-time expenses in police and fire. And then uh, the firing range operations expense, $473,000 is offset 20% uh, by projected user fees from other governments and the public. Uh, again, this fund is pretty much funded mostly by sales and use tax and that dedicated 0.58% uh, tax. 81, um, I wanted to, I'm not gonna cover uh, the two pages or so of, of, of little history, the six month history that we've, we've just gone through. You can see on the left side, all of the equity solutions and saving solutions. We had a total of 3.5 million of those that we were identifying from savings and 6.9 million from equity. So what I'm showing you here is that I, I've made adjustments to what our expectations are now beginning here in August and, and what we might actually use. So what is shown in, in, in gold is again what we're still uh, relying on to offset the shortfall you see in the general fund we still have an estimated five and a half million dollar shortfall and so we have identified uh, shortfalls uh, throughout the general fund in a number of different areas and then you can see all those i'm not going to walk you through those but the largest of those again was recreation revenues got all these identified savings that are here of 730 nine seven hundred ninety three thousand are are still going to be at this point can still considered to be savings or deferrals next slide is the streets fund and again a uh, similar situation here we do have both savings from cip projects as well as projects that are deferred that will for now remain deferred and if they if these projects are are not needed they'll be uh, reassigned in the CIP or else these projects will just uh, be uh, resumed at uh, a point down the road. There is um, a number of small funds that we brought to you in July, which I just didn't include in the presentation here because they haven't changed in scope. So uh, that is it uh, on that pre presentation. I could take any questions you had on, on anything I just went over. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Karen. Uh, good evening, Mayor and, and um, City Council. We are in the home stretch. This is a uh, PowerPoint presentation number four, and uh, we will do our best to move through this rather quickly. So there were four issues that we thought would be appropriate to, um, to just update the Council on tonight. And um, the first one is really uh, their early childhood uh, education effort. So, okay. Good evening, Mayor Bagley, members of council. Um, we can go ahead and move to the next slide and talk about early um, childhood um, education. So, in 2021, the proposed um, areas for early childhood amounts, we want to continue to work with our community partners and stakeholders to um, still use the, the funds in the best way. Good evening, Mayor Bagley and City Council members. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, first is really just go over what the Human Services Needs Assessment found. These that came out of the Human Services Needs Assessment do fit well with our current priority areas. And um, the graphic that you see shows what we allocated, the percentage of of funding that we allocated in 2020. So I also wanted to add this slide because this has been a very important and robust conversation that the Housing and Human Services Advisory Board has had. Uh, and that is around how do we view equity and human services funding? What is the equity lens that we put to human services funding? Uh, and without going into a ton of detail about the wonderful conversations that we had, uh, I think the, the main takeaways are the important changes that the board has made in the last few, we've had several meetings in the last few months has been. So um, next slide, please. Yes. 
Um, for the Affordable Housing Fund, what we're looking at um, for 2020, um, and I'm going to go through 2020 and then into 2021, um, is um, the fact that our budgets keep changing <laughs> from year to year, depending on what we're working on and what kind of grant funding that we have and what's what's going on. So um, in 2021, um, we are facing somewhat the same thing. It's a little bit different in the fact that um, we did get additional funding as being recommended in the 2021 budget to bring us back up to 206,543. As you can see, CDBG admin costs are estimated to go down a little bit. All right, um, all in favor, we have motion, uh, basically following the recommendation of staff to say, use the, uh, uh, the affordable housing funds in this, in this manner. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right, the ayes have it uh, unanimously. The motion carries. Okay. I will try to be succinct, even though it looks like a lot of words in the PowerPoint. So if we could advance to the next slide. We did contract with Kimberly Bolin and Associates, a consultant firm um, late in 2019. It seems like a long time ago. Um, the consultants also spent some time looking at our building, concentrating on the building spaces, on our